and I would like to share with you how I use Google Forms for student grading rubrics. Right now I have in front of you a blank Google Form and I'm going to start by giving it a name and I'm just going to call this one Sample Rubric. The first question I put is name and I'm going to make this a drop down and I will show you why in a little bit. Now the next part, if you make this required or not, is totally up to you. I leave it unrequired so that I can put it in classroom and the students can view the rubric so that they are aware of the grading criteria that I will use. However, if you would like to make it required so that you don't forget to select a name, feel free to do so. The next question that I will add is, I'm going to call this Project Grading Criteria. Now I'm make that Project 1. And this will be a multiple choice grid. My rows will list the criteria. One. Criteria two. Criteria three. And so on. For time's sake and demonstration purposes, I'll stop there, but you could list as many criteria as you wanted. And in the column, I put the numerical values. So I'm going to make this 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Now you could add another grid if you so chose to do. And also, again, requiring it is totally up to you. I am going to create a final question that I always like to have, which is instructional comments. And that will be a paragraph. So my rubric is created. I want to skip over and show you a sample rubric that's already done. This is a, for a student portfolio. And I have some fictional students listed in here. That's the drop down, and I'll show you how those get in there in just a minute. Then they, I select the hour that they're in. That makes it easy to sort in the spreadsheet. And then for the question, I put the evaluation, the numerical numbers, what they mean. You can see that I have the criteria, and then I can go in and select my instructional comments. I also add another section for portfolios so that I can go in and select the criteria or goals for the student's next portfolio and that information will go with to them along with the grade on their current one. I will show you how that works. Now before you add Doc Appender you need to go in and you can see on my Google Drive in the classroom, go Google Classroom folder, I have created a BTM1 folder where I put materials that I want to be able to find easily for the class. This isn't the folder that Google Classroom creates when you create a class. This is a folder that I actually added to that. I then have a folder called BTM1, our HR, X because this is just a sample and then I put the word doc appender so that I can easily find this folder when I'm searching for it. You'll see the importance of that in a minute. Inside you'll find that I have a Google Doc for every student in my class. Of course these are fictional students. Now that could take a lot of work but what really happened for me is that I have a student in my advanced class who is always done with their work early. So I had the student go in and create a blank Google Doc and title the document with the student's name in every single class. So every class has a folder 
and in that folder has a document for every student in the class. I then had her transfer the ownership of each document to me and then I went in and took her off the sharing and shared it only with the student who the document belongs to. So that makes it very private. Now once that's done we can move on to setting up our form. I go to my add-ins and I've already added this doc appender in so it appears but you would have to add in uh, add the add-on doc appender i'm going to open it and it's going to ask me if i want help or open sidebar and i'm going to open the sidebar and it asks me what folder i want to use i'm going to put a different folder because usually that will be blank but i've used this enough that it pre-populated the last one I used and you will see that I have a folder BTM1 HRX doc appender so that that's how I know that's the right folder. If I scroll down you will see that I have folders set up for all of my classes 7th hour, 6th hour, uh, BTM1, marketing, all of my classes, and each class has a, a document for each student. And I'm just going to go back up and make sure this folder is selected and select it. I'm going to click on next, choose a question, select question, and I want it to be name. And then I'm going to click Save Populate Selected Question. And it goes in and reads the name on each document and puts them in so that I can just select that for the student as I'm grading. I'm going to click Next. It's going to load the information and I'm going to select what I want the students to see. I'm going to put this in. It will default to a bulleted list, but since I've used this many times, um, it had already picked up the separate vertical tables, and that's the one that is preferable for grading rubrics. And I'm going to save this and close out. So let's see how this works go into view and I'm going to pretend I have a student project that I'm grading this one is Andrew Smith and he's getting a five on every single criteria and I'm going to leave a comment great job and I'm going to submit it Let's go look at what happened. When I go to Andrew Smith, it's put Andrew Smith, Project 1 grading criteria, lists the criteria, lists his score, and my comments. I can use this for every rubric that I can complete for whatever project it is or portfolio it will all populate in here for Andrew and he'll have it everything that, that I have for the year and have a record for himself now let's look at what happens in the spreadsheet so we'll go in and create my spreadsheet with my answers and I'm going to insert a column. I like to put my totals at the beginning right by the name. Just makes it easier for when I'm transferring the grade to the grade book. I'm going to go total.
Of course, this was an easy mental math, and I could have easily calculated this grade in my head, but most rubrics are a lot more complex with a lot more numerical value. And I can just take this information and transfer it to PowerSchool, and their grades are, are totaled and easy to input. I hope you'll find this method of creating rubrics in Google Forms as helpful and efficient as I have. If you have questions, please just ask. Thank you.